Hello, and welcome to another reading of Thomas and Friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content. Calling All Engines Summer is a busy time on the island of Sodor. The engines love to show travelers around the island. They visit the seaside, the windmill, and the new Sodor suspension bridge. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. He had a very important announcement to make. A new airport is to be built on Sodor, and I need you all to help. The engines were very excited. Thomas and Percy were coupled to a freight cars full of bricks and timber to take to the airport building site. Imagine all the travelers, chuffed Thomas. And all the airplanes, puffed Percy. Then Airy and Bert arrived. Stinky steamies in the way again, mumbled Airy. Why do we have to work near them, grumbled Bert. This made Thomas and Percy cross. They didn't want to work near the diesels either. The diesels were oily and they seemed very different to the steamies. Thomas, Percy, Airy, and Bert worked at the airport all afternoon. They shunted freight cars full of bricks and tar. The diesels bumped Thomas and biffed Percy. Dirty diesels, moaned Percy. I don't like them. Thomas and Percy had been so excited about working at the airport, but Airy and Bert were there, and now it wasn't any fun. That night, a hurricane swept through the island. It was the strongest wind the engines had ever known. All night long, the wind howled down the tracks. It tore down the trees and ripped off roofs. The next morning, Thomas gasped at what he saw. Bust my buffers, he cried. Look at what the wind has done. The seaside had been battered. The windmill was wrecked, and the Sodor suspension bridge had collapsed. Thomas felt terrible. Sir Topham Hatt came to see the engines. The hurricane has done lots of damage, he said sadly. Everyone will have to work even harder if we want to open the airport. Edward and Henry brought bricks to the airport building site while Diesel arrived with a load of timber. But the Diesels weren't talking to the steam engines, and the steam engines weren't talking to the Diesels. Everyone was cross. That afternoon, Thomas had to collect some paint for the bridge. He puffed into the builder's yard to pick up the pots of paint. But Diesel was in the yard too. Now I'll show Thomas who's best, Diesel whispered. And he gave the freight cars an extra hard shunt. Paint pots flew into the air and splattered down. All over Thomas. Thomas looked very silly indeed. Spotty boiler, laughed Diesel, and he rolled away. I'll show those Diesels, Thomas huffed. So the next time Thomas saw Airy, he gave him a biff. And when Airy saw James, he gave him a bash. Soon, the Diesels and Steamies were biffing and banging and being bashed all over the island. The engines were in a terrible mess and no work had been done. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to see the engines. He was very angry. You have caused confusion and delay. The seaside is still a mess. The bridge isn't painted and we will not be able to open the airport. No travelers will come to Sodor this year. No travelers, moaned Thomas. And no airplanes, groaned Percy. All of the engines knew they had behaved badly, and they were very sad. That night, Thomas had a dream. He was puffing along a misty mountain track, and there was a lady. Lady was a very special steam engine. She worked high up in the mountains. Lady was shunting trucks with Rusty the diesel engine. Thomas was surprised. We always finish our jobs when we work together, puffed Lady. The next morning, when Thomas woke up, he had an idea. First, he went straight to see Mavis. Mavis was a kind diesel engine, and Thomas knew she would listen. He told Mavis that he wanted the steam engines and the diesels to work together. Mavis agreed. It was the only way to get the airport open in time. Let's have a big meeting with all of the engines at the coaling stop tomorrow, Thomas puffed. Thomas and Mavis went to see the other engines to tell them about the meeting. Thomas told Percy. 
Mavis told Diesel, then James, then Ari, then Emily, then Bert. The next day, the engines gathered at the coaling stop. The steam engines and the diesels were all lined up. Thomas blew his whistle. Steamies and diesels need to work together, chuffed Thomas. If the airport doesn't open, it will be bad for all the engines. Both steam engines and diesel engines need passengers and freight to be useful. If we work together, we can get the job done, puffed Thomas. All of the engines agreed. After that, the engines worked harder than ever. They hauled bricks and timber and cleared away debris from the storm. They moved paint and tar and made sure there were enough workers to do each important job. And all the engines were careful not to bump or block each other. Even Diesel 10, the biggest diesel engine of all, agreed to help out. Soon, the engines were even enjoying working together, smiling and joking as friends will do. Before long, the airport was finished. It had shining buildings and a big tall control tower, and the runway was long and smooth. The engines were very proud and very excited. I can't wait for the travelers, puffed Thomas. And look, peeped Percy, here comes the first airplane. <laughs>